The Rancor's Brothel presents The Curse of Strahd. <laughs> okay, this is going to play D&D. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Last time on Brothel D&D. Give us a recap, Matt. Yeah, please. In the brawls. <laughs> There's we. Mm-hmm. There was we. <laughs> Are going. Well, then I don't know where we are. I we? saw a map. Somebody showed me a map. Cody had a map. Yeah, that was it that happened. <laughs> That's ten minutes of a four and a half hour session. <laughs> was that after the session was over? No, no. I think it was at the very beginning because I, mean, I, I said know. basically you guys know where everything the f- is now, so might as well show you the map. I don't know. This. <laughs> Something about the return to Valley Key. Yeah, okay. We talked to the other family. You, you. Okay, yeah, we talked to the Walker bitch. Yeah. Okay. And then she was the an end. old asshole. Yeah. And you went to the inn. Some might call her a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got nothing. Just <laughs> All right. Well, talk up. <clears throat> no, because I don't want any of this to be used. <laughs> so I'm using my whiskey. We'll get it with the compressor. Don't worry. Yeah, absolutely. They can bring that up. There's no problem with that at all. So, uh, I actually don't remember precisely where we left off, um, but I know that we are in the inn. I believe you folks had basically said anything you wanted to say to Irina. Not Irina. Uh, sorry. Esmeralda. Esmeralda. Thank you. I kept going the whole time. like, I'm going to call her Irina. Um... You've talked to Esmeralda. Esmeralda is going to leave to go back into the wilderness because she's on the lamb. You performed sending, I believe it was, to Rikinia. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I talked where he to was at, and He kind of gave us a hint of where to go, which is essentially go to the temple. What I understood it was. You did. You had sending. There were things to Twice. discuss. So, what would you guys like to do? We're going straight to the temple. No, we were going... Come on! (laughs) Damn it! I wanted to do that before he got here, but I forgot. I mean, you can go straight to the temple. Give me another five minutes. Our plan, I believe, was... was, uh, Windmill windmill first. first. Windmills. Everyone has been saying different things. So, is there... Lucas said that to me at work the other day. He was like, no, we're going straight to wherever. And then I sent that message in chat, and we got three different answers immediately. Well, if one of them's him, you can't rely on that. No, he said he didn't have any opinion. Yeah. Then you didn't get three different answers because I didn't answer. <laughs> so one of these two gave two different answers. <laughs> That's actually possible. <laughs> Somebody thumbed Which means up. he gave two different answers. <laughs> Somebody thumbed up going to uh, Ravenloft Walmart. Yep. Which I've decided cool. is a... Barovian Walmart is probably a happy place. Why is so low they're scary? Nobody left. No, you were supposed to. Either oh. time. He, insert, he inserts the laugh track at that point, man. <laughs> Ding. Okay, so you you now spent the morning going around and buying various items. Does anybody else want to do anything? No. Or should I actually get the Curse of Strahd book and begin play? Yes. Okay. How uh, quickly are you guys going to move? Uh, how far away is it? Uh, you, Lucas, you know it's... I mean, you've traveled. You know it's over five miles. It's about five miles to get back to the crossroads where you would go to the windmill. You've never actually gone up onto the hill where the windmill resides because... Is it within a day's walk? Well, yeah. Okay. We're going to the windmill? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. Let's just do normal pace and get there when I get there. Okay. I think we go faster. Let's go faster. Alright, let's okay. go up slightly over medium. Uh, I'm just one. There's slow, medium, and fast. Uh, We're going fast. No, one in between. Too damn bad. Yeah. We're going to okay. get attacked by things, so... <laughs> we're going to do that in our adventure game. We're going to the windmill so that I can get enough, enough experience to level up. Oh, before we go to the temple. That's exactly what we all need to do. Or Berez, whichever one we're we going to. As you recall, as you head back towards the castle, you you begin to climb again because obviously Valaki's kind of in the valley. Um, so you climb up, come around uh, back to where you fought those wolves. What seems like years ago, but it was only a couple of weeks, if that. Um. 
past the rotting wolf's heads that are mostly skulls at this point, you know, down around. As you curl around, you notice that the it's pretty, pretty heavily forested on your right-hand side, and as you sort of come around, you realize that the tree opens, and in the distance, you can see this windmill. Um, absolutely de- uh, decrepit looking. Um, this Valich Road transitions here from being a winding path through the Balanoc Mountains to a lazy trail that hugs the mountainside. Um, in the heart of the valley, you see a walled town. You see a key, blah, 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 blah. A branch of this road leads west to a promontory, atop of which is perched a dilapidated stone windmill, its warped wooden veins stripped bare. The onion-domed edifice leans forward and to one side as though trying to turn away from the stormy gray sky. You see gray brick walls and dirt-covered windows on the upper floors. A decrepit wooden platform encircles the windmill above a flimsy doorway leading to the building's interior. Perched on a wooden beam above the door is a raven. It hops about and squawks at you, seemingly agitated. It's taken you about almost two hours to get to this point, even at a quick pace. Okay. So, I mean, you've been on the road for about two hours. You've come through the woods, and it's sort of opened back up. You can see Valaki sort of in the distance down uh, to your right, to the north. And now on this hill, you're just seeing this absolutely decrepit windmill. I mean, it, it barely looks functional, if it is at all. Like I said, across the... You see a raven sort of hopping up and down as you approach, and it's sort of, gah! Gah! Insight? The reason. 19. 21. 21. Uh, 20. It, you've been around, uh, good, waste all those rolls. Um, you get the sense that the raven is, is trying to warn you. Um, you see it several times, almost look at you individually, and caw, 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 and then you see it take flight, and it flies sort of towards you and then circles around and heads behind the windmill and down the hill. And it, when it does that, you realize that there are a small circle of, what's the word in English? Men here. Druidic pillars. Megaliths. You see these sort of pillars off in the distance down the hill, 100, 150 yards. You can see that there are some ravens um, sort of hanging out on the megaliths. Should we uh, go down there and see if it's one of our friends? <laughs> sure. Let's go check it out. Let's see what we can see. And then we go storm the windmill. So you go around. Uh, I have that idea. You go around the, uh, as you go around, you, again, it, the windmill sits on a hill and the path ends there. So you kind of have to just cut through the grass. Are you cutting close to the windmill or are you just going out and around giving the windmill a wide berth? I give it a berth. Sure. You smell baking. Bake, like, is it good? Yeah. Is it sweet baking, or is it like meat baking? A little, little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Mm. Is it a familiar baking smell? <coughs> to some of you, yes. Yeah. Is it pies? What you see as you get down there is you see um, the stones are all covered in moss. Um, and they appear to have crude carvings on them. One appears to be a city in winter. Uh, the city is covered in snow. Um, there's a city in springtime. Like flowers and so on and so forth. Um, there's a city with a giant sunburst overhead, and then there's a city depicted um, with fallen leaves. And that's those are sort of the four megaliths, sort of at cardinal directions. Um, the ravens are all kind of perched on and around, some of them hunting for seed and stuff, you know, looking around. And again, one of them, when you look at it, just sort of caw, caw, caw. Give me uh, a stone cutting. Sure. History? History of religion? Uh, Lucas, you can roll me history. What about stealth? I have a plus eight in that. Twenty-two. Mm, yeah, I got a six. What are you looking for in in regards to the stone? It's not anything unnatural. It, it's a history check. Uh, it's it, they're carved out of. You would imagine that the stone is maybe on the order of a thousand years old, maybe a little older. Wow. Um, they've been here a while. Carvings were done at the same time. Um, but you, based on weathering and erosion, from what you know of the stone of the area, you don't think it's something that's not native to Barovian hills and mountains. Uh, not magical, as far as you could tell. Might have been used in a ritual, but if it is, it's not anything you would recognize. Okay. Um, one of them is actually pecking at the top of one of the stones. Which stone? The one that depicts the city in autumn. How high up is this? Uh, they're not that high. I mean... Pinter can probably see the top of them. I mean, it doesn't specify how tall they are. I'm going to imagine they're maybe 10 feet tall. 
Um, can I investigate that stone? See if there's anything around the bottom of it, on it, uh, that I'm not seeing right away? Sure. Give me, uh... Yeah, just give me a perception roll. Speak with animals. Sure. Go ahead. So 17 plus 7. Cool. Uh, can you give me a wisdom saving throw? Okay. 17 plus 4. Uh, you all hear Udna gasp as he's staring at the base of this stone. What is it? I don't know. My DM hasn't told me yet. At the top, the bird appears to be eating some sort of, uh, sort of scrounged food. Sure. Um, appears to be maybe, uh, vaguely bread-like. Um, uh, at the bottom of the circle is a pile of teeth. Can I tell that they're human? Absolutely they are. Can I tell whether or not they were adult? You wouldn't think so. They appear to be small teeth. Large pile, small pile, just a few. Um, I mean, like, it's, it's not as if... It is not as if someone died there and then the teeth ended up there. Like, you're literally seeing a pile. It's maybe 20 or 30 teeth. Um, I point out there are two gins teeth here on the ground. What's around the other pillars? Um, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming you all sort of take... You're obviously focusing... Pither's focusing on his spell. Right. But everyone else is kind of searching the area. I want to go to the winter one. Okay. I mean, you all can... Since he's taking 10 minutes, you all can just take 10 minutes and search the area fairly thoroughly. Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. Piles of parts. Nope, you don't notice anything else. Just that, that just that, that one pillar. Um, I want What's to start, the bird eating? Uh, like I said, some, it appears to be some sort of bread, some sort of baked, baked good. It looks to you like maybe the remnants of a pastry. How hard is the ground? Like, can I dig into it a little bit? Sure. I'm gonna try to dig into it where that stone's at, where the teeth are at. Okay. Well, I know he's doing the ritual, but can I attempt to engage the raven in discussion? Sure. <laughs> hey, give me a sign if you're one of those, you know, fly, flying peoples. It sort of cocks its head and looks at you out of one eye. Raven guy, you idiot. I wasn't talking to you. Anyway, uh... As you dig up the dirt, you see that there are... There... Worked into the dirt appear to be more children's teeth. You mind uh, turning, turning back to your human form and having a little discussion, sir? Sort of looks at you now. It's head turned the other way, looking at you out of the other eye. Quit f***ing with me, sir. Pither, I'm going to say by now your spell is probably cast. What would you like to do? Uh, what are you eating? Food. Do you know Martikoff? Sort of cocks its head back and forth since I'm doing this, and it's completely silent to the uh, <laughs> listeners on audio, as, as if in contemplation. Um... Birdman. Yes. And it, it, you, you get the sense that it knows who you're talking about. Are, are any of you Birdman? You see that bird sort of look around and you get the sense that, no. There was one that flew off a minute ago. Was he? And it, 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 squ- it squawks. And they all sort of squawk at each other. And then another one sort of flies up and sort of, you know, says, Danger. There's danger there. In windmill. Yes. Many hatchlings go in. But don't come out. No. I, I, I feared as much. Um, I also love the fact that you guys are just hearing the raven caw, and he just keeps you hearing only that half of the conversation. Impressions. Of anything, anything, uh, yeah, anything I should So ask is you? he talking to the raven, or is he squawking at the raven? <laughs> <laughs> While squawking looks more fun, I think he's actually talking... In okay. English, I want him to be like just flapping the wings, <laughs> and clucking. He's like, he's like bobbing his head. <coughs> and how long does that last? Is it a minute or is it ten, ten minutes? minutes? Okay, so you got time. Uh, not Raven kind, guys. But okay. do, do we have any questions? Maybe. Did he say what's inside there? Danger. Did he say how many dangers? No. Damn it. But um, yeah, def- definitely, basically confirm that they're. Killing children in there, so <clears throat> ask him uh, how yeah. often they come out with the teeth, or they do it every day at a certain time. Like at dusk, we could ambush one for some info. Yeah. No, Devin, Devin saw the teeth, and he is I'm just about. Is Devin still standing? Yes, I, I, <coughs> Devin is ready to go. Devin, one, 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 one. Devin f-ed up about fifty-two episodes okay. ago and would like to rectify something. Yes. Um, do do, oh, do they do yeah. they, does anyone come yep. out? Yeah, you all feel not the monk and Unda so much, no, but I, you guys both feel uncomfortable. I know what it is, but yeah, I, I lean over to Unda and like, what's wrong with the dwarf? 
I like the idea that he's just sort of like, like seething, foaming at the mouth. Yeah. Arr, arr. He's a man of light. I mean, I got that, but like, everything's dark here. Why is he all pissy now? Oh, I would ask if anyone comes out with any regularity. Sort of shakes its head. Is the old woman home? Is the old woman home? Davin, you get this, because it doesn't squawk, it just seems to nod. I love that it has good nonverbal communication skills. <laughs> what a polite raven. <laughs> so. Uh, Davin's already walking. Yeah. Thank you for your time. In, uh, uh, insight rolls from guys. everyone except for Davin. That's a long thing, huh? 14. 19 plus 7 is numbers. 8. Okay. Um, you all just noticed that the... That the um, you heard? Hmm? No. I know. It just, you just noticed that everyone else just sees the raven nod and don't think anything about it. You noticed that the, the raven nodded three sharp nods and then looked back at Pither. I point this out and say, I believe there may be three. Well, there's four of us, so advantage us. Let's go. Okay. How long until Davin gets to the door? <laughs> I mean, if, if he would have moved, I would have followed. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm following you too. Yeah, but Davin, Davin wants to be angry. We're going to give Davin no, a few steps yeah. to be angry, but yes. <laughs> Davin, you are at the door. Try the knob. The door opens. Cool. Open it up and go inside. The ground floor has been converted into a makeshift kitchen, but the room is filthy. Baskets and old dishware are piled everywhere. Adding to the clutter is a peddler's cart, which looks familiar, a chicken coop, a heavy wooden trunk, a pretty wooden cabinet with flowers painted on its doors. In addition to the clucking of chickens, you hear toads croaking. The sweet smell of pastries blends horribly with a stench that burns your nostrils. The awful odor comes out of an open, upright barrel in the center of the room. Warmth issues from a brick oven against one wall, and a crumbling staircase ascends the wall across from it. Shrieks and cackles from somewhere higher up cause the old mill to shudder. And, standing next to that barrel, is a familiar-looking old woman. She stands over the top of the barrel, looks up. You! Me! Come to buy pastries? Actually, I came to buy the boy free. What boy? The boy that I saw you take in Barovia. Oh, he's no longer here. I thought he was working for you. Well, I took pity on the poor lad and returned him to Barovia. I am stalling for these guys. Yeah, I'm so wicked fast. Guys. I'm already there. Oh, there? Yeah, no. They're coming up behind you. Put Jeff one square in the door. Is Jeff going in yes. the door? Okay. I said hey, I Jeff. was. So the rest of you are kind of outside looking over his shoulder. If I see her, I'm running at her. Cool. Like, I'll blow past him. Okay. Well, in that case, let's roll initiative. Since we'll <laughs> so much for the pleasantries. I'm so f- excited. So much for the had a good fight in a Cody had so much roleplay to, <laughs> to go over. Yes. Kind of sadly a waste on that, but it does have initiative. It has a nat 20, so 24. Unda is at the top of the pile with a 24. Who is next? At a 17. 18. Um, so... We've got Davin at an 18. We've got uh, Pither at a 17. And the monk. 13. Let's see what the old woman's initiative is, shall we? Okay, Unda, you roll a 24. I want to shoot her with an arrow. Okay, you roll at disadvantage. Wait, because he's there? Because there's just a lot of in the way. Well, let me ask this. Does the initiative start before I run in or as I run in? I'm gonna assume she didn't really believe Jeff was here to buy pastries anyway, so yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna assume that there was any sort of action. I'm just gonna go off the initiative rolls. Okay. I just wanted Everyone, to I, I just wanted to clarify in case for let's figure yeah, yeah. knowing what obstacles are in his way. Yeah. No, I assume you're all I mean, you're kind of pushed your piece is pushed up cramped there anyway. So let's try doing this first. Okay, I'm gonna try to hit her. This Wait, you're rolling two dice? You said it was disadvantage. Oh disadvantage. Yeah, sorry. You're correct. Disadvantage. Uh, 17 plus... Damn. Um, Damn. Damn. It's a nice roll. 17 plus 9. That's a pretty nice roll and a disadvantage roll. You Um, hit. 8 piercing damage. Okay. And uh, as a bonus action, I ensnare her. She's restrained. It's a strength saving throw. 
You hit her with the, oh. the arrow, but it I just like seems that. to... I don't know if you it seems like a good yeah. shot that should take her out. <clears throat> it doesn't appear to phase her much whatsoever. Okay, straight saving uh, throw. Makes it. She is not strained then. Nope. She is not dabbing. Um, she cackles maniacally. Circle around the wagon, move into the room, up to her. I'm going to use my action to dodge. Okay. And I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. I'll put the Spiritual Weapon over here. Okie dokie. That is... God, I haven't done this for a while either. 22. That hits. Nine damage. Does that look like it hurt? Yeah, you see that You see that bite into her back. But she just turns and looks at you and grins. Okay. Pither, are you raging? I is raging. Thank you. Moving in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 23. Hits. What weapon are you using? I'm using the Zespier. Eight. Eight damage? Yes. Not a very good shot for you. <clears throat> for a D8? Plus four. <laughs> yeah. Really not that great. Shouldn't it be more if you're raging? I did, yeah, so it's D8 plus two because it's because of the weapon, and plus two because I'm raging. Plus your strength. I guess I forgot how to do this, too. <laughs> it's been a month. <laughs> Die okay. plus the strength modifier, plus those other things. Oh, so... Uh, 12. There you go. That seems a little more mathematically accurate. There you go. Attacking again. Okay. Uh, does a 12 hit? You swing and you miss. Monk. Okay, so I run through the door. Mm Mm-hmm. And what I'm doing, my attack, is the... I'm going to do a kind of a Liu Kang flying kick to the face. I'm going to land, elbow to the side, and... (coughs) Pop up with a fist to her face. It's gonna be my three attacks. Well, let's let's see how we go. First. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm, I'm I agree. I'm I narrating. That. This is good. Let's see if you roll a one first. As I'm running to, I flame on my two iron fists that I now have, <laughs> just so we're all clear. <laughs> I appreciate the embellishment. I don't think you actually have to do anything. But oh yes. no, no. Every time now, <laughs> before I make contact with something, it flames on. Okay, that's a flaming monk. Yes, sixteen hit. No. Beans. So Liu Kang, she ducks it, and you fly over the top. You land beside her. 21 hit. Okay, you backhand her with your fist. No, it was elbow. Excuse me. For elbow. eight. And his attacks are not treated as magical. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They are. And uh, that's uh, 26 for seven. So... 16 is not hit. Yeah. No, right? You leapt up in the air. She seemed to duck underneath it and cackle. You turn and land two solid shots into her body. Um, still cackling away, because that's how they roll. Okay, my turn to play. The woman in front of you, uh, she wasn't exactly an attractive woman to, before. Um, she suddenly turns to looking incredibly hideous. Um, scarred, uh, covered in boils. And you see her eyes go entirely black. Lucas, make me a wisdom saving throw. That is a 12. As her eyes, which have now gone pitch black like something out of the f***ing X-Files, um, she cackles and you see her look out the door towards Lucas. And what'd you roll? You said 12? 12. Um, Unda slumps to the ground. He's unconscious. You hear footsteps on the stairs as you see two uh, similar-looking bizarre individuals. Uh... Maybe slightly. These two are probably uglier than the first one. Um, they come down the stairs. You see one of these horrific-looking women uh, sort of dive down the crevice between the stairs and try and get into that position. Oh, okay. Which I'm assuming she can do with a relatively decent roll. I'm going to make a roll just to not totally suck. Do it. <laughs> she does it with dexterous ease when I roll a nat 20. Um, the other one stops at the head of the stairs. Wisdom saving throw. From Pither. Yeah, we all died today. Just depends on if you make your saves or not. Oh, six. Well, saving throw. Still six. <laughs> <laughs> inspiration? <clears throat> um, inspiration. You want to stay awake. Pither, you are now frightened. Actual status condition frightened of the woman at the top of the stairs. Which okay. you have to look it up. I believe you have to dash away from her until you make a wisdom saving throw. You just okay. have to run from her. Okay. Um, You are now no longer in this place. You're a boy again, and when you first had to leap from one spot to another, 
you know, it was a test that all the guys had to go through to, to, to attain this sort of, you know, the honor of the tribe. Except this time, when you make the leap, you know when you made the leap as a child, you made it, and you, you were the best at it, in fact. Uh, but this time, you make the leap, and the rock just comes out from under you, and you're just falling. You're just falling into darkness, just deep, horrible. You never hit the bottom. You just keep falling and falling and falling, and it is absolutely terrifying. Do I have to keep running away from her, or do I have to be a certain distance away? I think it's a certain distance. You need to look up the status condition Frightened. I know you have to dash away from her. I think it's 30 feet. It is, because um, I have it. And uh, I need to remember that that spell is not cast on you. That's spell number two. Now I get to cast the fun one. Deck saving throws from the other two of you. 18. Pass. 21. Good thing. It's a real good thing. Um, she opens up both palms, and you guys hear a loud krakow. Uh, Lucas, if you were conscious, you would see this blow out the side of the uh, window. Does the sound wake me up? No. You are you are status asleep. So if you look up the status mm. asleep, that's what you are. A frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within line of sight. The creature can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. So you don't actually have to move away. You, Davin and uh, Matt, Davin and the monk each take uh, 14 points of damage as you happen to dodge a giant lightning bolt that shoots out of her hands in a straight line. Awesome. Davin, it is your turn because Unda's unconscious. Right. Can I see that he's freaking out? What's your passive perception? Fifteen. Yeah, I mean, you know that there's something up with him, but you're not sure what it is. Okay. You know it's incredibly unusual for him. Oh, sh! I don't want to do that either. I'm going to move one step over, reach over and touch Troy, and cast protection from good and evil. And hope to hell that I'm right. Okay, go ahead. Um, I hope that these things are one of these things, and I'm not sure. Uh, an aberration, a celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, and or undead. If the target is already charmed, frightened, or possessed by such a creature, the target has advantage. Oh, on, on any, any new has advantage on any new saving yes. throws. Oh, so. Yep. So, assuming he's correct, you will get advantage. <clears throat> it's just important because of the way the spell. Goes from chorus point on. And I will hit the original one again with my spiritual weapon. Swing away. Moral. Looks like 24. It hits, hits. For 7 damage. No, 8 damage. I'm sorry. And how do I do concentration? It's a constitution saving throw equal to 10. Constitution saving throw. Yes. Equal to 10 or the damage. Right? 10 or half damage. Whichever is higher. And, uh, it made the same. Okay. Had it not, this would have gotten very interesting. But um, okay, so you've taken your action. It's Pither who is next. However, my thing happens yeah, before you get your effect. Uh, no, Jeff did help me. Roll advantage. So it's going straight because I had disadvantage. Or does it does it cure me of it? I would just roll roll straight with him saving. Yeah. I thought that's... No. Read Frightened again. Oh, it was ability checks and attack right. rolls, yes, not saving right. throws. Yes, he's right. It's not saving throws. I don't think it's saving throws, because that wouldn't make sense. Yes. Right. Okay. We do it again. <laughs> uh, Better. 14? I'll Wait a minute. Wisdom? Yeah, 14. Hey, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Mm-hmm. You take 18 damage, Troy? Why? As you are racked with pain, you feel it burn inside your brain behind your eyeballs. This goes straight through your resistance. It does indeed. This is psychic damage. Um, I will use my stone endurance, which is uh, your roll d twelve and plus something. It's his Goliath feature. Yeah. Oh, uh, d twelve add constitution to number rolled and reduce damage. Jesus Christ! How much damage can you? A lot. Nine plus five is fourteen, so I take four. <laughs> okay, it's now your turn. You still, you are still frightened. Okay, so you have to follow the conditions of frightened, which I don't have to really do anything. You just can't move any closer can't to what's frightening. Right. 
Which is which one? That one on the top of the okay. guy. But you also have disadvantage on attack rolls. Right. Um, is it to everything or just yes. the yes. one that's Yes. Because yes. okay. yes. um, he's trying to fight through the fear at the moment. Gotcha. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Can I throw something and stab something? Like with my two different attacks? Yes, as long as you use dex when you throw, unless it is something you can use strength when you throw. Depends on the right versatile weapon. The what do you throw? A javelin. Um, no, that that defense. is strength. I if it's thrown, it's, a, it's strength. If it's, so you're you. What are you throwing at? I'm throwing from the blunt with the blunt end of the javelin at him. At, okay. At, um, what's his name? He's attempting to wake me up. Yeah. So I roll. Good Lord. Um, <laughs> I can't. I can't really ascribe anything more than disadvantage for the fact that you're throwing a weapon backwards and you're already getting disadvantage. So. <laughs> Roll three d twenties. You're in, you're improvising a weapon. Yeah, like that's you, that gives yeah. you disadvantage. Okay. You you got, yep, to you've already got disadvantage. So so roll so it. Roll a disadvantage. I'd love to give you more disadvantage. Uh, thirteen probably doesn't hit, or fourteen. I mean, I'm prone. I don't know what you want to say. Oh, he's prone. You have advantage. <laughs> yeah. So then, but I'm gonna. <laughs> he's got advantage. <laughs> Huh. Uh. <laughs> well, here, take a minute to think about it. I want to watch the Black Panther trailer. That just dropped. Lucas, roll me a die. Roll me a d20. Okay. I rolled an 11. Of course you did. Couldn't roll a more definitive number. Um, <laughs> you want me to, I don't I'm know. just annoyed because it just doesn't make any sense. I can't... You used to be able to double penalize someone for doing something on top of doing something yeah. that they were already penalized for. Gotcha. I can't really do that. Weren't you telling me that you like this system because you could you, you, so can, as, you can ascribe advantage <sighs> right, or disadvantage instead of giving pluses or minuses? It is. It's so much more clean. But in a situation like this, like what I want to do is I want to give him a disadvantage and give him a minus four. But I can't, because the rules don't work that way. So Lucas takes four damage as he gets hit in the face with a javelin. Alright. Do so I wake, wake up? up? Yes, you wake up because you took damage. Okay. You wake up on the ground going, what the hell just happened? Do so you have to re-roll initiative? No. No. Second attack. But I got a whole round of running. On the main I'm not gonna move. Middle lady. Okay. Don't hit. Okay. It is the monk's turn. Okay, so we've only damaged the white one. Yep. I'm gonna press on that one then. Is maintaining concentration a bonus action, Joe? No. All right. You I'm just can't to... do more than one thing that requires concentration. Gotcha. Okay, punch to the gut. Because I don't really understand how you... Because you can't double cast. Can With you? the left. You can. Misses. Uppercut with the right. 18. Hits. Uh, and that is... Six damage. And then uh, following through with the elbow and cracking her in the jaw again. On a crit fail. So how many times did you hit? Once. Just once. So one concentration. <coughs> Pass. What's she concentrating for? I'm sorry. On the... Oh, she's not concentrating anymore. You can think that. Oh, okay. Matt, make me a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. 20. Okay. Um, You suddenly feel the hair on the back of your neck raise, and you feel really uncomfortable, and then you just shake it off. <laughs> Heavy genies. Roll a disadvantage. What's he rolling a disadvantage? Because his attack rolls are at disadvantage. 16. Nope. She makes it. Yeah, she slips moves. through as you swing uh, whatever you're willing. Oh, you're willing the spear, right? Spear destiny. I need deck saving throws from Pither and uh, yeah. Zavin. Because, I mean, she threw one bowl of lighting. Why not throw another bowl of lighting? She didn't throw it. Well, uh, 14. Crit. Uh, pass. Fail. Awesome. <laughs> he actually got a hull pass. He doesn't get hit at all, right? No, he definitely gets hit. Crit? It was a 20! Yeah. It's a save. F*** you and your rules. 16, 17, 18, 18, 20, 22, 23 damage. That is lightning, so you take half. So, 11. And then 11 for you as well. You take half because... Succeeded. Oh, uh, Jeff and Google said. What's the will save again? Wisdom. One of these days I'll get that right. One of these days I'll remember what you mean. 22. Okay. You also feel a, a shudder of something pass over you. Okay. Uh, the one at the top of the stairs hurls magic missile at you um, for a total of 10 damage. At who? At uh, uh, Pither. Oh. 
10 force damage, which I'm assuming you take half of, so 5. You assume correctly. So They're okay. whittling you as best they can. Unda! I get to do two attacks because I didn't do two attacks last time. Am I thinking three rules when I'm saying if he stands up, he loses one of his attacks? No, it's just half no, movement. No, that's, that's third. Yeah. Okay. Okay, stand so up and take two attacks. There, there's no such thing as a full round action anymore. I know, yeah. but I can't help it. That's so ingrained in my brain that I'm going, no, you don't, Lucas. And I'm like, no, you probably do. Um, so I get to basically, basically, I get to do two complete things, yes? No matter what they are. I mean... Like I can cast a spell and then attack, right? No. No? No. If you're casting a spell, you're casting a spell. If you're making a physical attacks, you're making physical attacks. You can make two physical attacks. You can launch two arrows. Or you can slash twice. So if I cast a spell, that's it. Yes, yes. that is your action. There are no attacks. I cast silence. Okay. That's an interesting choice. I don't know if that will help or hurt. I'm not sure yet. You're not doing any spells that require talking. No, I'm just not going... Yeah, yeah. lightning bolt is verbal. So that is a 20-foot radius. I mean, which is that. That's the entire room. If you drop it on the center of the room, you hit everybody. Okay. Um, Okay. Last for 10 minutes. Unless you... Concentration. Concentration. Yeah. um, So everything in there goes silent. So you guys can't plot anymore because you don't know what anybody else is doing. Um, But, okay, but that's all I can do. That's all you can do. Um, Dabin. Move that there. Spiritual weapon moves across the room behind the initial old woman. For a 23. Hits. For 11 damage. She's looking a little annoyed. Uh, I'm going to pull my axe. (laughs) Yep, go ahead. Swing on her. And that is... 21. Yep, hits. But you don't have a magic weapon. Yeah, I do. Where'd you get a magic axe? Out of the yeah, Gultheus tree? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. That is a magic axe. And that is seven damage. I will move one square over. Pither, make me a uh, wisdom saving throw. At advantage. Not at advantage. Yes, at advantage. That's right. Sorry, there's so many advantages and disadvantages <laughs> being thrown around, I keep forgetting. Yes. Uh, 19 plus two is probably enough. Maybe? 21? You're back into reality now. Snap back into reality. Um, it goes really quiet, and you're like, wait a minute. Okay, cool. So, now I'm going to run on this bitch. <laughs> yeah. He charges up the stairs at the one, at the at the uh, horrible, you know, boil-covered woman who looks at him in surprise. He snapped <laughs> off her spell. Uh, 26. Hits. Ah, uh, boogers. 10. Okay. You're still using the spear, right? Sure, and everything probably this time. Yeah. Uh, does a 17 hit? It does. Nice. Nice. So 17 is the DC. Defined the threshold. Good job. Well, it's a different creature. That's better. Um, like, 15. That's right. 15. Come Plus on. 8. Yeah. Okay. Two solid stabs right to the chest. Blam, blam. Unpleasant. Unhappy. Um... Things not going well for her. It is the monk's turn. How long is that? The monk! Uh, I think a minute. Going for another triple hit on um, the white one. As I'm doing it too, I am circling a little Ten. bit, so I'm going to okay. so not push back it. one. Keep me time. Yep, Unless I get hit. Hmm. Uh, 11 misses. That hits. 25. It does hit. Ooh, for max damage of 11. Nice. And then the final hit is 16. Damn. Sweetness. <clears throat> you throw a punch, she dodges, but you were already she throwing... She dodged right into the one saying, that was swinging from the other side. Yeah, you yeah. brought the other one around, clocked her, but she still had enough sense to get out of the way of the third one. If she is still concentrating on anything... Yeah, 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 I'm getting there. Okay. It's a total of 11 damage. Oh, yeah, right? well, she got no, Just in case. Yes. Not after you broke it, she wasn't. Okay. I just want to make sure that there wasn't something else. Um, Covering all the P's and Q's. No, I got you. Because now that I know how temporary hit points work, I really little, want to get them. Is it 11? <laughs> so he did 11 damage? Yeah. yeah. So it's 10. Yes. Okay. What? The DC is 10. Oh, okay. Well, you have to do more than 20 damage to yeah. make it more than 10. 
keep rolling a 10 on the die. She's still it good. Works. Wisdom take. Do I have to manage on still? Yes. Okay. Yep, because you still have protection of... God! Can you still concentrate on it? Yes. The spiritual weapon doesn't require concentration? No, it does not. Oh, okay. Eight. Mm, you are... I didn't expect it to hit with advantage, so I didn't look to see what I actually... Oh, wait a minute. To you. Nine. <laughs> Are they cursing him? I'll tell you this. It's a six-level necromantic spell. Damn. You are sickened. How, how is she casting? Still there. Huh? Duration. How? Oh. Yeah. She's never cast another spell since we've started. Okay. Because I'm assuming it's only verbal and somatic to cast it at the start. If she's maintaining concentration, yes. it allows her to move yes, it from you are person to person. So you are currently sickened. You know what they did take away, which helps me in this still? Casting on the defensive. Yes. I just gotta find a damn spell that doesn't take verbal. <laughs> really there are not too many of them anymore. There really aren't. Um, That's why I figured it might help some. Um, now, is it a, it's a 20 foot radius. Yeah, but how does that affect verticality? Probably 20 foot. It's like a 20 radius. foot ball. It's 360. Yeah. Okay. Maybe 20 foot up, 20 foot. Yeah. I mean, did you cast it? He put it right in the center, center of the room. room. On the floor or on the ceiling? Like I had muttered to you. I'm just saying. Either way, I don't I think don't she can think get anything... far enough away yeah. to... I mean, and still have space. line of sight. I don't know that yeah. there's anything How tall the right ceilings? above everybody. Eight feet. So I'm all good. Remember when I said there are plenty of spells that you don't realize how powerful they are? Oh, yeah. Nope. I wasn't listening. Yeah, I, know. I am going through my whole spell list, and I'm not finding anything that doesn't have verbal. Yeah. That is insane. Um, I'm finding several that are just verbal. That makes silence way better than it used to be. All right. Well, you know, we'll just go ahead and do this then. We'll just do this. Crit. Crit. Yeah, that's all that I need to make. Two crits. Which is damage twice, modifier once, right? Yes. Because I got not, all I can do is attack with my fists at this point. That from that. 15, 20, 24, 28, half, 14. At Troy. At Troy. As she just lays into you with claws on the ends of her hands because she's got nothing else she can do. And then 7, 14, 21, 22, 26 to Matt. Is it the top of the order? It's Unda's turn. Yeah. So I'll fire. These two have been hit. We need to kill these yeah. guys, guys. She's been hit more. I'll try to kill her. Yep. That is 14 plus 9 hits. Yep. Uh, and if they're not undead, f*** me. Um, that's only 5 damage. Because they're not undead, so I don't need extra, extra damage on them. And again. That, what is that? 6? Mm-hmm. Whatever 9 plus 6 is. Uh, that is not enough to miss. That it. arrow flies over the top of her head. Uh, but you did hit for 5 damage. Yeah. Still good. Still concentrating. Still concentration, though. Dab. I'm going to hit with the spiritual weapon on the same one that I've been striking. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, 15's probably not going to hit. Nope. Spiritual weapon been pierces some of her clothes, but just misses stabbing her. She twists away. And... Oh, hey. You know what? I can probably erase that holy symbol tattoo off of my list. <laughs> That's probably a good call. <laughs> can you erase what missing can you hand? hand from your list? <laughs> um, well, shit. I'm going to hit with my axe. Makes sense. So Roll away. And miss. Cool. So you swing and swing, and she just keeps dodging. Just knee over. You can't do any bonuses about speaking game. Pither. Disadvantage. So I did kind of well, I'm... Do I, have to roll, I don't have to roll a wisdom? Uh, you probably do. Yeah, this one is at the end of its turns. Oh, so okay. you make an attack with this advantage okay. now. Then you try and throw off the spell afterwards. Um, 17. With this advantage? Jesus Christ. I have plus 9. That's fair. Yeah. On the one you're standing in front of? Yes. You hit? 11. Okay. Again? Yep. I'm out of this. Okay. No. Now you can make your wisdom saving throw. Yeah, crit out. Okay. 
Yeah, you're at oh, advantage. Yeah, you're at advantage. You're at oh. advantage on the saving throw. Thirteen. You still just feel absolutely nauseous. Sick to your stomach. Monk. Which which one hit me? Uh, the green one. How's the white one looking? She definitely doesn't look nearly as cocky as she did before, but she also doesn't look like she's ready to die either. Okay. I'm going to burn a key point. I'm going to use Flurry of Blows, so I'll get a total of four hits. On the white one. Okie dokie. Because f*** her, right? 19 hits for 11 damage. Miss with an 11. 24 hits for 8. Last hit is a 27 for 10 damage. So she's sort of got her back turned to you as she's been staring at Pither, and you turn, and you punch, and you punch. You got three hits, right? Mm -hmm. And then she dodges, but when she dodges, you bring your elbow across and hit her in the back of the head, and you hear a snap. No, you don't. You don't hear anything. Uh, ah, ah. (laughs) I feel a snap. She's dead. (laughs) So I'm getting seven temporary hit points then, because I killed her, and I'm within five She's filmed me, right? Yep. So I'm good. You're good. Um, remember to do this quickly. Um, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Remember to do this quickly. Yeah. Uh, perception rolls? Uh, perception rolls actually from everyone but Matt. Uh, I have an 8, even though I crit failed. 19. Okay. 17. As the one crumples to the floor, you see both of them go wide-eyed. And you broke the circle. Somebody doesn't know his D&D lore. I have a feeling she was empowering them. Somewhere. Or no, I'm I'm reminded of uh oh shit, what was the movie the, the old craft. no the... <laughs> <laughs> I think we have our periods at oh, the same time. This one, God, the... <laughs> the old Greek mythology movie, Wrath of Titans, Clash of the Titans. He's thinking about. Uh, I'm thinking of Wrath of the Titans. No, the old one. Where the the three witches all shared one eye. Oh, with yeah. the robotic... W- Bubo. Yeah. Yeah. Furies? I'm wondering if she's got something on her. 22 hits Matt, right? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Significant. Significant. <laughs> <Significant. laughs> um, I thought you had like, some key point action. And she actually... Uh, there's she's going to move in. I have to take dodges my action. Matt, make an attack of opportunity. On whom? She's Green sliding one. over into that corner. Is that like, do I just do one attack or do I yes. get my whole. One. Does even one attack? It's a single hit. It's Whenever I use my attack action, single it's hit. an attack, attack action. action. It's, an yeah. it's, a it's a reaction. Crippe! I punched a wall. Good job. She deals you. Not bad, actually. She's, She's hitting like a champ. 17 hit points. Ooh, yeah. She claws so you. Yeah, she well, I, because I had those seven <laughs> right. temporary hit points, I'm still standing, but I'm down to three. Damn. 14 didn't hit, does it? No, sir. Um, Doesn't mean if I'm not raging. The rage used to lower your AC. I don't mm-hmm. know if the rage still lowers your AC. No, it does nope. not. Um, lowers Thacko. That would be a good thing. I don't know what Thacko is. Uh, attack of opportunity. To hit AC zero. I kind of created fell too. Um, she oh, moves. F- she moves up and around. Our periods together. Up she's to the next floor. Yeah, she's moving up to the next okay. floor. Away so she you. actually out of sight. Uh, for you, yes. Okay. For everyone, Troy can probably still see her, but for everyone else, does she like? Run. She runs. She like, yes, okay. she's she's moving. She moved twenty or thirty feet. Okay. Yeah. Quick question. Yeah. Is this an actual mill? Yes, like they're they're grinding flour, grinding people, grinding children. Well, well, that's why I'm, that's why I want a distinction. There is a mill. Yes, um, it doesn't. The wind was not moving the windmill, and the windmill was in okay. tatters, so you don't assume that it works. Okay, because those were highly explosive. It's like if they go upstairs, this is like the building on fire. What was this thing called on the map? I remember that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remember? Mm-hmm. Why bone crusher? Old Bone Grinder. Old Bone Grinder. Go ahead. Oh, That's okay. man. We're so oh, going to this one. That's the only one I can see. Yep. Five points. I mean, I thought it was like you call a fat guy slim, you know? Like, and that's a mess. <laughs> boop, boop, boo-doo. Davin, it's your turn. Okay, how far up is this one? <laughs> uh, you would have a hard time getting around him because of the crumbling staircase anyway. So I'd have to make you make a roll. Right. How, how, high, how high up? I mean, she's 10 feet above you, but you got to go about 15 feet around the stairs. 
Oh, you're trying to chase that one all the way upstairs. No, the the spiritual weapon can go up. So you're going to attack the one right in front of you? Yep. Go ahead. Spiritual weapon zooms across the room. Silence. Uh, 15. It's only 8 foot ceiling. So, it's 15. 20 feet high. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Uh, would you like to do anything personal? You're standing on the staircase, Pither. Yeah. You can go through the space, right? <laughs> you well, can, but since it's a crumbling staircase, I'm going to make it hard on him. Oh. If I just used my bonus action, can I hold my action? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know the rules. I'm asking you to call it. I would think hold is... I think hold is a full action. Okay, um, ready. Ready the action. What would you like to ready your action for? When, if Pither clears the stairs, I will follow. Oh, I see what you're saying. And is she on the stairs? I think ready is on an attack action. No, she's just, down. No, okay. Yeah, she sort of, she has nowhere to go, so she sort of like she's hid herself like, in like yeah. an animal saying, she's kind of get me, bro. Sta- underneath the staircase for that. So there's no space underneath the staircase. She's kind of got her back. Oh, well, that's well, so that's what I was wondering because he because you attacked her with the magic weapon, right? Oh, I thought she went up the stairs. No, that one's up the stairs. Okay, that one's on the second floor that you haven't seen. Oh, then I'm I'm still down there dealing with the one on the ground. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured you were. Doing. Okay, that's why I'm I surprised thought, you didn't step up and. Strike. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought that that was. Yeah. Okay, I will move up on the one that's still on the ground and. Swing with my yep, axe. Swing away. Twenty-one. Yep. Hits. Four damage. Big with a no better, no better. She backs herself into a corner, sort of looking around furtively. You swing and clip her shoulder, but she doesn't seem to be too perturbed by it. Um, monk. If she notices, no. Davin is. Oh wait, did I? Sorry, Pender. She can't hear it, but Davin is screaming at her about children. <laughs> it's fair. Would would I think would I know that she is out of range out, out of the twenty whatever range for the spell? No, I don't think so. Okay, um, I will pursue. Okay, you follow on up into the next floor. Dirt cake windows allow very little light to enter this eight foot high chamber, most of which is taken up by a large millstone connected to a wooden gear shaft that rises through the ceiling in the center of the room. A stone staircase continues up toward the sound of the loud uh, cranking. There's no sound anyway, because so yeah. you can ignore that bit. It's probably like a thrum, a oh, vibration, kind of, kind of feel a vibration maybe. Um, the second level up basically has the same footprint as that room, but cleaner. Okay. Um, there's no there's no crap in it. It's just literally the mill. Yeah, go ahead. She's on her way up the stairs to the next level. Dang it! This nice is all the end of stuff. <laughs> well, I don't know if there's BC's the same. Fourteen. Miss. Uh, Twenty-one. Uh, hits for ten. Um, monk. The monk will attack the bitch under the stairs. You gotta move closer to her. Okay. Okay. My speed is forty-five. I'm sure that's not an issue. Forty-five. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you do extra five? He, his continues to go up. Yeah. It's f- cool. Monks do some real wushu. Sh- Oh, yeah. When we get to level 9, I could run across water or up walls without an issue. I'm very excited for this. Um, you gotta make it there first. If we get to our level 9. Yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, so She's I'm gonna going set to... off her spirit bomb now and kill you. Flurry of blows. So Go ahead. Four hits. 16. Miss. Uh, 23. Okay. You're always catching them on that reaction punch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, maybe I'm banking on it now. Uh, for 8 damage. First punch is just like this. Major flinch. Mm, 15. Let's the reaction punch. There we go. It's 25. Four, 10 damage. Okay. Again, you seem to just throw the punch. They dodge the first punch. You smack them with the elbow as they follow as you follow through. Cool. Have you ever seen Tony Yathro where he throws the punch and it kind of fakes him out and then he throws the elbow? Nope. That's what I was thinking. Like, I feel like... You're smart enough to go major flinch and pull, follow through. So sure. we can just smash, it smash like on purpose. Yes, <laughs> blood. I was trying to punch everybody. <laughs> <laughs> blood leaking out of the corner of her nose. Um. Okay. Matt, well, you one of these. Uh, nope. She tries to call you and misses. I'm assuming eleven. Thank God. And eleven's gonna miss you as well. True. Make a opportunity attack. Oh, yeah, you're God rolling damn. at disadvantage to hit him. That's a good call. 
Oh, let me forget that again. Huh? 13. Okay. Um, she bolts up the stairs. So she's now gone up to the third level. Uh, Unda. Uh, I mean, I'm going to continue to try to kill this person. Yeah? Keep firing away. Uh, a 21 hit. It does. Up the stairs. You have allies. Oh, never mind. I'm it thinking, doesn't work I'm thinking like rogue. That. Yep. <laughs> uh, six. That's a hit. And, uh, let's see. Uh, what is that? Seven, eight, nine, Eleven. Okay. You seem to hit her twice with glancing blows. They don't seem to affect her very much. Uh, dab and... I'm gonna hit that same one with spiritual weapon. Try to. That'll hit. Uh, that's a 23. Yes, it does. For 10 damage. Yep. And that that was my bonus action. For my action, I'm going to use my channel divinity. Fair enough. Um... And I, I'm going to use the, the life domain thing where I heal. Uh, how far down are you? I have three out of 53. <laughs> so I'm a 53. little low. <laughs> okay, I am... I'm a fifth level cleric. So are you asking us? Or? I'm making sure, because apparently I never updated the, cl- the, the level number. Oh. Uh, five times my cleric level. To 25? Uh, yeah. And I'm trying to think if I'm I'm not I'm not below half, so I can't top myself up, but I can dump twenty five into you. The monk looks at you appreciatively. It's a little hard because that doesn't take you above half. Channel divinity is not any sort You're of. Right, it's present holy symbol, yeah. and she okay. screeches as you do so. Huh? Really? Fifty six. She's pissed. Right, You're fifty three. It looked oh, like yeah. she was going to get one kill out of this, maybe. I had three, so <laughs> yeah, 25. Does, does, it stop? does it stop at half? Yes. So, okay. Um, so that was Davin's turn. Pither. Charging up the stairs? Yeah. Okay. How like how far up did she get? Like, oh. you, you, She got all the way up out of your sight. Okay, yeah. You two sort of fought, and you both got up to like the middle of the room. You both fought. She's now upstairs. Okay, yeah, I follow. Um, as you follow, suddenly... Sound comes back into your ears. You see essentially what appears to be a bedroom. Um, There are a couple of beds sort of crammed into this really tiny space. And in the corner where uh, the woman is standing, um, you see sort sort of a rotting wooden closet. And there are three crates stacked on top of each other inside this closet um, with small doors set into them. You see... uh, that as you come up, she is pulling something out of the small crate, and as you turn around, she's got a child gripped by the throat. F**k. And she sort of cackles and says, let me go or I'll kill it. So what would you like to do? I need to know, like, how far I moved and how much more further I, I have to go. You can move anywhere in that room you please. I can't. What's I your movement? Forty. The room is 10 feet across. It took you 20 feet of movement to get up here. Okay. You can so move you anywhere got, you want. You've got 20 feet more movement in like, a single move. I'd like to attempt to grapple. Okay. You can move in and attempt to grapple. Which is a strength check. It's a, it's athletics. Which is a strength check. Yes, but I mean, if you're proficient in athletics, then there's a higher bonus. I have advantage in strength checks. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm trying to get at. <coughs> So what are you grappling rolling? her or are you grappling the child? I'm grappling her. And we're straight. What happens if he grapples the child and pulls? Well, I mean, head pops sure off. What you're trying to do. <clears throat> Ow. Okay. So we're just rolling opposed strength checks then? Yeah. Athletics or acrobatics. Which is strength. I get, a, I get a choice of strength or dex, yeah? Yes. Okay. I rolled a 21. Okay. You got over. I want to drag her down the stairs. Uh, you can get her back to the top of the stairs. Okay. Because uh, you're moving essentially at like half speed now. Yes. Okay. How can you? what I would do. Okay. <laughs> so you moved her did halfway. She, did she let go of the kid? I assume that the kid is somewhere in the melee here. Matt, it's your turn. Uh, I'm going to keep kablamming the bitch under the stairs. Go right ahead. Kablam away. It's going to be a four hitter. Unless I don't need to. Well, I haven't used any, like, ever. So I have four left right now. Okay. I'll show the edge. Mm, 14 misses. A 21 hits, or 23 hits. 
for eight damage. Sixteen miss. And rolling one more. Again with the f-ing reactions. Every other f-ing damn hit. Uh, twenty-five for six damage. So you swing and swing and swing and swing, and again miss. She dodges, pop, hit her the second time, and she just keeps bobbing and weaving. But she she's definitely fighting a losing battle, and she knows it. Um, so I'm grappled. So I need to use acrobatics or athletics to <clears throat> break, break loose. loose versus his strength check. Yes. This is unfortunate. I've got a 14. I have an 18. Okay. She tries to break the grapple and is unable to because everything else is going to require, um, she's got to use her hands to cast spells and stuff. So, okay. You still have a hold of her. It is Unda's turn. Oh, wait. I still got one more. So I have another character. So. She crits That's Matt again. Unfortunate. <laughs> Maybe he reminds her so bad to have uh, He called it before I pointed it out. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Six, ten. Twenty-six damage, Matt. <laughs> I'm at zero. Wait. No, I'm not. You have a thing that makes you pop up a couple of one. Yeah. 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 So I'm at one. one. She's gonna slide one step forward. Go ahead, Unda. No, uh, I have eight, eight plus nine. Oh, you have a plus nine. Nine plus nine on my longbow. Go ahead. So seven plus you hit be seventeen. Um, you hit seventeen. And I haven't been doing this the whole time, which I should have been. He's below his hit hit point, so I get an extra D eight attack because of Colossus. <laughs> so it's not really a Colossus, but go ahead. I don't. I'm not sure. He's upstairs. Uh, ten damage on that one. Don't look at me. I'm not gonna complain. Yes, Gavin. I fast. will hit with the spiritual weapon again. Yep, go right ahead. 21. Yep, hits. For 10 damage. Okay. And swing with the axe. 19. Hits. 4 damage. So, you hit with the spiritual weapon, and you drive it into her, and you think, I'm just going to tee off on her, right? You sort of bend her over, and you go to swing with the axe, like you're just going to take the head clean off, and she moves, and you're like, shit. I missed. And then it sort of has that Resident Evil thing where, like, the top of her head comes off. <laughs> so you did, it wasn't a clean beheading, but you did smash the axe right through the center of her brain. So she's dead. <laughs> so she falls in a heap. Pither. I'm running for the stairs. Okay. Um, um, you you can uh, make me, if you want to shortcut it, you can shortcut it. Um, just make me some sort of decent athletic-y roll or acrobatic-y roll. That's decent enough. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Even though 19. you suck at it. Um, no, I've got a plus five. It's a dexterous dwarf. Yes, I understand that. You're also missing a hand. Oh, yeah, I forgot. He's so, figured how to use that stump. So you don't hear him because he's still in silence, but he puts the stump down to propel Sound himself up the stairs. Ah! That's true. Okay, so <laughs> you're, at the top of, you're at the top of the next level. Okay. Um, Pither. Do I need to do anything to maintain the grapple? I don't think so. I think she just no. Once she's it. grappled, you, she's yeah, grappled. You okay. just keep. You can attack her. Yes, I. I want to. And she I can attack she in the grapple. Love, yeah, yeah, I know. And headbutting. Um, <laughs> no, he can use his weapon. That's cool. That's a barbarian. So <laughs> well, she'd rather break the grapple and get away so she can do something. Right. So can I move? Yeah. Are you trying to drag her? Yes. I would say you can drag her at half speed. Okay. So will twenty put me? You're at the. You're basically at the base of the stairs. Okay. So you get you drag her down the stairs and you turn over and look and there's Pither sort of standing at the top of the stairs going down to the first floor. Okay. Did he drag her back into the silence? That far down? Probably twenty. Yeah. I mean that's why she went upstairs. Yeah. So yeah, even if you put she's, it on the floor, she should now. be back in silence. Okay, but I can't. I can't ungrapple. That would be an action. Probably. No, you can let no, go. You just let her go. Okay, so I let her go and stab her with my spear. You don't even have to let her go. You can just, yeah, stab just keep her with a grapple and stab her. Yeah, you're a big guy. You got her with one arm. Keep a hold of the bitch. Uh, that'll work. Twenty something. Yep. Plus, I get disadvantage against him anyway, Jack. So for twelve. Yep. So it's better for me to try and break it. Uh, twenty-one. She actually had a bad chance to break it for twelve more. Nice. If she had had... If she was going up against anybody else in this party, I think she could break the grapple. So where are they now? 
kind of between no, like the base. Okay, the well, they're kind no. of between the seven, he's at the third, he's at the base of the of the top stairs. We're at the we're at the base of the second floor okay. the stairs. So the they're, they're technically on the second floor, <laughs> but they're like right there. So we're like the second set of stairs is like here across the room. Of, yeah, essentially, it's kind of here, and here, and then so they're occupying essentially the same square. Be five, ten, fifteen, twenty. That is there. So as you run here, you come up here. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, Matt. Yep. Will my speed of forty-five get me to her? Yeah. Great. Floria blows. Older. Does he have any advantage since he's been grappled? Ooh. No, I don't think so. I All think right. they took that away. Did they? Hang on. Let's look that up first. I don't want to retcon something. <laughs> if anything, I would say it should be disadvantage for Matt to not hit Troy. Not if he goes behind her. It's I'm a martial artist. Okay. <laughs> artist. Artist. I grew up with a minus four, so you want to take a minus four, then I'll let you do it. Good for what you grew up with, old man. Nope. No advantage. Who cares? No, because they don't. They don't have a penalty for it. So there's no penalty for it. There's also not going to be an advantage. I already rolled the first one, so that was a miss. Uh, twenty-two hits for second blow. <laughs> Ten damage. Uh, then uh, nineteen hits for nine damage, and a fifteen misses. Mix it up. So. You run up, you swing, she dodges, you almost hit Colossus, but it, on the back swing, you elbow her in the head, and then punch her again, and then the next shot, as they're sort of grappled and twisting and turning, you know, you kind of pull the punch so you don't hit Colossus in the ribs. Okie dokie. Uh, da, 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 da. So we're going to roll another crit. Rolled four of them already. Uh, you're attacking in the grapple? There, she's got no other options. You're attacking? Yeah. She's trying to bite your ear. That's I think it. she's trying to hit you. I don't think I can in the grapple. Yep. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> Just gonna go Rules this. lawyer! <laughs> 13 damage, Matt. Damn f***ing prick. <laughs> so you've got a hold of her, you've got a hold of her, and she just reaches out with one claw and rakes Matt's throat, and there's a spray of blood as he drops. Don't look at me like that. I am looking at you like that. <laughs> Boonda, it's your turn. Judas. Um... I borrow some silver. I'm going to go to the gas station and get some cigarettes. Can I get far enough to get to him? Probably 30 would get you to right beside um, right right beside the dwarf. Hey, uh, I, br- I brought you back up to Half-Life in one hit. So that's as far as I can get. It's not my fault if you lost all that. Well, <laughs> it literally is your fault because you just opened your <laughs> trap. Um... <laughs> I'm going to ready an action. <laughs> See, none of them have believed me, but I think you are going... They think I'm a dick. Like, you're going to rules lawyer the f*** out of the next game. I'm going to ready an action, because I don't want to fire into combat. <clears throat> uh, you can fire into combat. There's no penalty against it. There is? I thought there was... No. But only if you crit fail, you'll hit one of us. Oh, outside. absolutely. On a crit fail, somebody else is getting plugged with an arrow. You kill that kid, and I will kill you. The kid? You, there's no kid. I'm going to assume that in the grapple, since she okay. probably let go of the kid. Yeah, yeah. She couldn't grapple the kid while being grappled by him. That's She could, like three but she... Of she of it's, it's, really, it's really quiet, but I apologize. I stabbed her time. twice recently, so if, either way, she probably would have let go. Like, I, don't know. I mean, logistically... Pither's got the kid stuck on the spear, just still going after <laughs> How does she look? Does she look pretty bad? She's still pretty ugly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Some of the boils have popped where she's been punched. Zero out of ten would not date. Um... Swipe left. Need more beer. <laughs> Terrible. Okay. <laughs> no, you can fire into melee combat. There's no rule against it. Don't roll a 1 out of 20. Remember, you can't hit me. I'm on the ground. Not true. Eh, 1 out of 20, I'd still let him have a chance to hit you. It's also... <laughs> Absolutely. It's also being resisted, so... I'm just going to ready. If she breaks free, I'm going to fire her. Okay. Uh, I'm about to do the Dabs. Get my keys. <laughs> Is it open enough that I could bring the spiritual weapon up through there? Yeah, I think you can. How far can you move it? It's spiritual. Could Twenty it feet pass through. If it can go straight Five, up. 5, 10, 15, 20. You can put it on the square right beside Matt, which would hit her diagonally. Okay. No, you can't put it there. Ten feet to the right. There. Okay. I'm kind of. I kind of, you know, playing with it a little bit, but you can get it that far. Yeah. Those rooms are really not big. They're 20 feet across. So if you can take it five feet that way, you can take it 15 the other way. 
Fifteen's no not gonna hit. Are we still in silence? Yes. 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 Okay. And I miss. Okay. I move up and try and hit with the axe. Hit and third. Lift. Is he guess it is? Well, he will be. Twenty. Hits. Fourteen. Okay. I love the thought of a seven foot man mm-hmm. inside an eight foot tall structure wielding a weapon that is at least six foot long, stabbing someone that is occupying his personal space. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but we'll go with the shaft. Uh, 16. Nope. That one doesn't work. It's getting too tight. You got a body on the floor, you got a spiritual weapon, you got a dwarf beside you. Matt, death saving throw. Yes. One check mark. Ah, ah, ah. Um... Swing at the dwarf. No, that's not gonna hit. It's way too low. Okay, she swings on you and misses. Unda. Um, I rush over to Matt and cast Cure Wounds on him. You're in silence. Oh, I can't do that, can I? Wait, probably it's not. just touch. I think it's just touch. He probably has to say something. Range is touch. Mm. Trust me, I've been sitting here looking. Almost everything is verbal. Counterspell was the only thing I could find that was not verbal. You weren't no, looking at any of those calls. Is it? Yeah. Just uh, do a uh, do a medicine check and save me a death saving throw. Yeah, see, when you're looking at this, range is touch. Oh. That what means you you, you, you 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 mean you ha- you have to walk up and actually touch somebody. Yeah, right. You can also choose to end the silence, so you can cast cure wounds. You could. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to end it because I don't want her to cast anything. She it's can't. Fair. Well, she's grappled. Because she can't do the somatic. She could if it was a strictly verbal spell. Okay. These things exist. Well, she didn't earlier, so I'm thinking she doesn't have it. Man has a point. Yeah, he's not on. I know that's why I said it. I mean, I don't know where she's at, but she can't be that high. I mean, Yeah, but my is being restricted because it's a normal weapon. Okay. I mean... I, I mean, guess. doing nothing is not is not really a great option. So, then I'll f- fire at her. There. Um, seventeen hits. Nine and six is not seventeen. Well, I thought that was an eight, sir. So it's a fifteen. So it's a miss. No, you didn't think it was an eight. I thought it was an eight. That one will hit. <laughs> <laughs> but when it has double digits, you question it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't roll high. Let's uh. Eight points. Seven points, sorry. It's three points, technically. Whatever you're rounding. <laughs> no, you're rounding down. So. I know, but I thought you already rounded. Nope. Some number there. Seven was my time. I decided it's that. <laughs> uh, it's probably not going to matter in the long run. Um, Damn. Una fires into traffic, catches her. The other one just seems to ricochet around the small room. I'm going to continue on up the stairs. Uh, 20 feet. And draw the attack. Okay, you can draw the attack. I don't know if she gets it in grapple. I guess it's yeah, she would rule against it. Um, I'm going to say you make it halfway up the stairs, though. Just because you're fighting through bodies. They're literally at the edge of the wall, so you would have to go through. No, that, that's fine. Okay. Difficult terrain, whatever. Yeah, 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 That's just... That hits. She rakes you with her claw for seven damage. Seven damage, that's not gonna be enough. I don't think for spiritual. Eleven. Nope. No, that's for my const- my concentration check. Oh yeah, yeah, spiritual weapon. Didn't think about that. No, Good his call. protection. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting he's got protection. Um, am I out of the silence? How tall are you? Because I, I think an average sized person would be, but I think you're too short. You're you're only like three feet tall, right? Four feet. Four feet plus. Then I stack that high. Four and a half feet tall. All right, you're within six inches. I'll give you an over and under. Which one do you want? Uh, go under. Rolled over. Okay. Apparently, you need to be one step higher. Okay. To be this tall to cast spell. It's <laughs> <laughs> written on the wall. It's it's very good. Good. <laughs> it feels good to make some of those jokes. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> I do a Spiritual special weapon, special miss. Short, short, called short. Okay. Short jokes. Um, that was Davin's so pit. Thirty-eight seconds long. Uh, 18. Hits. And for 9. She's still very much alive. Yeah, doesn't it? 
She's still very much alive. She just doesn't have a whole lot to do at the moment. I'm trying to think. Silence is going to run out here sooner or later. It's a ten minute spell. Silence is a ten minute spell? Yeah. Jesus Christ. F*** <laughs> this edition. That's ridiculous. Never mind. You heard it here, folks. We're playing Pathfinder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. Jesus. Okay. Uh, who's that? Uh, Pither went. So Matt made me a death saving throw. Made it. Almost stabilized. Mm-hmm. Disadvantage on this ass because that spell is still good. Nope. She swipes at you and just misses entirely. Um, Unda. It's your turn. The hag continues to swing uselessly. It's pretty sure 16 plus 9 is more than 17. Yeah. Did you take into account the fractal? With the curvature of the earth. 15. Okay. Uh, so for you, that's... Ooh, 12 plus 9. Mm. Exact same, 15 again. Uh, so Unda fires uh, two arrows, lodges them in her chest. Doesn't look pleasant at all. She's starting to reel from the blood loss. It is Davin's turn. Davin is going to move up one more step. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Probably just lean a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he is going to cast as a second level spell, Guiding Bolt. I need to hit her with a spell attack. This better f- hit. <laughs> That'll do. That is a natural Crit. 20. That is a natural 20 on the back. You hit? With lots of stuff. What are you hitting her with? Hang on a second. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, now you're Are we all getting hit with something? No, I just need more dice. Somebody can't just borrow from my pile. He wants to be fancy and pull out all kinds of extra dice. Yeah, you got enough. I, can I got more than that. Oh, uh, don't let him shame you. You, you want, use whatever you dice you skulls. want. No. Ooh. No, you don't. No? Skulls? <laughs> they rolled it's funny. When, and me. when I rolled the last time, I rolled a pile of sixes. Yep. Give him here. That was just, just to make Lucas that was feel like better. Satan. Don't worry. Five of them. I don't know how many d6s you need. Well, the spell is for 5d6, and I just doubled it. <clears throat> oh, wow. Yep. I got this metal one here, too. Oh, yeah. Skulls aren't half bad. I'm right? going to go ahead and count that just for the audience, because that's a solid. That is bit. 10, 20, 30, 41 radiant damage. And Davin is screaming about you child-murdering bitch. Go back to hell where you belong. Um, so he fires this guiding bolt. You guys just see the the brightest flash of light that strikes her, and Pither suddenly you're holding nothing. <laughs> like you're not even holding rags or phones. You just there suddenly was a weight there, and now it's just gone. And you both just see he just he just smote her out of existence. Okay, I see this happen and drop silence. We you got her. Saving. We had a combat. <laughs> Matt, maybe one more death saving throw, and you drop silence. Okay. I, he he stabilized. I was gonna I was gonna cure him, but okay, go ahead. I, well, I was gonna say I can do it as a bonus action, but oh, that's true. It's gonna cost me a spell slot. Me too. Oh, oh we're gonna take a nap. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we probably will. Right, but they can hear and heal you. So that you're uh, so up to hell. One, he's a 1d8 plus 20 wisdom modifier. Because they're going to get it back, right? You're supposed to get it back first. Yeah. Oh, let, no. Let, oh, me do, let me do it. Okay. Because mine will do more. Maybe higher. Okay, that's fine. Two plus spell level. I'll round it up just to be nice, because that was a pretty effective fight for you guys. 2200 XP for each of you. Hey, I am six 2, level. 2200 apiece? Yes, 2200 apiece. Um, so everybody can roll Arcana or Religion. Whichever's oh. better. Mm-hmm. I'll cast Guidance. One, one, one. One. Oh, I'm not rolling because nobody's yelled at me. Oh. Three. That's 14 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5. 23. 23. Thank you. Uh, you got a, like, 20-something on your religion, right? I got an 11. You got 11 17 on. plus 3 Arcana. plus... 12. 
So 24. 24. 12 did you roll very well on Arcana or... No. Okay. I rolled a 3. Something definitely did happen when the first one died. Ma- uh, now thinking about it, Davin, you definitely identify these as hags. And you know that hags... Work in threes? Yes. But you know that by breaking that grouping, you change the outcome entirely. Um, you're, you're rolling on religion, so Arcana would actually know what it is, but that's the, even though you rolled a great religion roll, that's the best you can get because none of you got an Arcana aspect of it. But you know that it is a, it is a grouping thing and that their spellcasting is tied to each other. Yeah. Jeff knows what it is. but Jeff knows what it is. But it does increase the XP for killing them by a significant amount. What does? The fact that they they're in a coven. Yeah, uh, it's like a pack it's coven cast coven cast. Oh, um, it's, it's not it's a pack, good. It's not a well, pack tactic. Think of it he was just no, yeah. it's a, it's it's a, it's a comparison. No. It's a they're all sharing a spell pool. Right. Once that back. once there, once there one of the three is gone, the other ones lose right. access right. to that. They lost access to all the like fifth and sixth level spells they were using to wreck you guys' faces. Yeah. As soon as you killed one, literally they have magic missile and sleep. That's it. This is also why Cody said do not go to the windmill when you were second level. Yeah. Because they would have f***ed you. Yeah. Uh, so now we own this, right? We have the deed? I don't know. You guys want to have the pictures? deed. I was saying, I thought it was one of your, your guys' original characters. Oh, I'm pretty sure Bozak has it, but I mean, you know, might makes right. I'm going to check on, I mean, I, I'm assuming I saw the kid. Yes, you see you see a kid cowering on the floor. What about the other uh, crates? Uh, one of them is empty. The other one has a, a small girl in it. Neither one of these kids is the one we saw in Barovia. No. Uh, it was two weeks ago. Wisdom saving throw, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Probably a disadvantage. Because Davin let one of them die. Um, 16. Um, Davin just wails for a time and just, like, smashes things in the room. The kids look really uncomfortable. But no matter what any of you say to him, he's just smashing things in a rage. So I'm talking to the kids. <laughs> um, Just figuring out where they're from. There are other details about this room. As I recall, they're all creepy. There are a lot of children's clothes. Um, yeah. The kids actually look in relatively good shape. In fact, they look like they've gained a little bit of weight. Yeah. Fat them up. Uh, they're both in tears, obviously. You do see that there is a ladder leading up to a trap door. Oh, oh that was... Well, hold on. <laughs> Investigate it first, please. Well, no, but... <laughs> okay. We no, can't just say we're doing things without, like, you know. Yes, and. Um, <laughs> where, what crate? What crate was she in? Was it downstairs or in the upstairs room? Uh, both upstairs. children were upstairs okay. on the third floor, where the bed is. Okay. Don't ask me why there's one bed in this room when three people live here. So. And there's there's reasons. nothing else in this room. Which to. which room? The upstairs room. The top room. The the third room. The room we're in. Well, he went up to the third room. You all went up to the third yes. room? Okay. I didn't notice. Well, I mean, if he's talking to children, then I'm, that's... Okay. That's what I'm saying. When we, don't, um, when we don't establish... Next to the closet is a heap of discarded children's clothing. Is there anything in Davin's size? Probably. JK. Um, the boy introduces himself as Freak. He is seven years old. And the girl, Myrtle, is not yet five. Where are they from? I'm assuming Barovia. Yes, they're both from Barovia. Okay. So, so what? What do you? What will you? What? Are, what? what will, uh, they seem obviously terrified. Well, well, what are you? What are you going to do now? What? 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 We will. We will take you home. And you see, he kind of looks at the little girl. Um, we. D- we don't want to go home. Why not? Perhaps the holy man in Vatiki could help. The holy man or the Martikovs. Irina was always nice. She's. Gone away. The little girl starts crying. Why don't you want to go home? Because our parents don't want us anymore. You ever wanted to see Valaki? Um, she stops crying at this. They seem a little excited. I hear there is a toy store there. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, <laughs> have an inspiration. Oh yeah, you earned that. That's is no fun. Is no Blinsky. 
Unda has never been there necessarily, but that is worthy enough of an inspiration. I know this area. They seem very excited now. Oh, Toy Story. I bet it's Blinsky's. Is it Blinsky's? I look at everybody else. (laughs) You would know it's Blinsky's. He's no fun if he's not. He has a monkey. (gasps) A monkey? Are you gentlemen doing anything else? Or <laughs> Uda assume... also goes, oh, a monkey? <laughs> <laughs> I have another inspiration. <laughs> well, he wanted to go up the ladder, right? Yeah, are yeah, you, are uh, you, are you going to open the wagon? At, I mean, the trap door? Is the trap door locked? Mm, it doesn't appear to be. If it's locked on the other side, does maybe it's not Does it appear trapped as a trap door? Oh, would you like to make some sort of roll to discern if it is trapped? Is it perception or? Sure, make a perception roll. 17. You believe it is trapped in as much as it is a trap door. I open it. You now open up and you see the windmill directly above you. So I'm outside. You've reached the windmill's peak, a dome chamber filled with old machinery. There's not much room to move around. Is there anything in there? Is it an actual room or I'm outside? I'm sorry. Um, it looks to me like you're outside, but I guess that's just because it's showing me Okay, so if I peek my head out and look around, do I see You're, boxes or anything? No, I mean it's literally I'll just it. an opening, open okay. space. If there's nothing there, I'm just gonna close it. Um, anything else you fellas want to do? Search I mean, the bodies. Yeah, search the bodies in the rest of the rooms. The bodies themselves. Let me double check and well, see. There's only there's two now, so. <laughs> well, I'm being a little facetious. It's just Jeff really killed her. One more shot from any of you would have killed her, but Jeff, like, I know, still killed. How many arrows can I re- can I collect from there, everyone else? How many arrows did you shoot? Quite a bit. You don't even know. Uh, I had 56, <laughs> so 11. Uh, uh, you can get three back that are usable. Okay. Oh, I also uh, look at the monk and say, I believe this may be useful to you. And I hand you one of my um, healing potions. Well, I mean, aren't, we're probably going to rest here for a bit, aren't we? Yeah, but I, mean, I have, I have three. Th- 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 thank you. Thank you, Wunda. Uh, I might try to heal up on my own and save this for combat, if that's all right. But I appreciate it. Is that a is that a one d four plus two or what is that? Two d four plus two. Ooh. No. Um. What? Uh, sorry. What else is going on? Searching and searching the bodies and the rest um, of the. The bodies don't have anything on them. There is some jewelry hidden in this bedroom area. You find six pieces of cheap jewelry. Cheap jewelry. Uh, Unda, do you have appraise isn't a thing anymore, is it? Nope. Uh, make me a Vishtani roll. Third year running. What do you want me to add? Roll and add... Yep. There was a 20 in there. You would know that they go for probably... 20 to 30 a piece is probably a solid going rate for it. Um, you're not gonna get much more per piece than that. I mean, I know there's a jewelry maker in Valaki who can try to sell some off and make a little extra cash. You also know that the Vishtani would probably give you a better deal unless you can manipulate that guy. That's true. Um, so how many bits of jewelry? Or six. Six bits of jewelry? Six bits of cheap jewelry worth approximately 25 gold a piece. Uh, so that's the bedroom. I assume we're all searching the rest of the tower, yeah? Yeah. On the second floor, you don't really see anything. I mean, that's just the mill. As you go downstairs, the pastries are now burning. It smells kind of bad in here. Uh, you do no- notice, uh, somewhat sicken- sickeningly, that small human bones litter the floor of the first floor. Mm, makes sense. You didn't notice it in the beginning, but there are a number of them. I you start s- I start measuring them and making copious notes. Fair enough. Are, are these other crates to be opened? Um, there's all kinds of stuff down there. Um, so there, uh, what do we have? There's a chicken coop, uh, a heavy wooden trunk... A uh, wooden cabinet with flowers painted on its doors. You hear chickens. You hear toads. Um, so there are other things to examine. I'm just getting there. Um, the barrel is full of greenish black something. The barrel in the middle of the room. The cabinet contains wooden bowls full of herbs, baking ingredients, flour, sugar, several gourds of powdered bone, uh, locks of hair, dozens of locks of hair, and three small labeled containers. One is labeled youth. One is labeled laughter, and one is labeled mother's milk. The chicken coop contains three chickens, a rooster, and a few laid, uh, laid eggs. Free breakfast. Is anyone opening the wooden trunk? I'm checking for trap. Uh, 21. It is vibrating somewhat, and you hear the croak of toads inside. Okay. 
us. Swarm of toads. Leave it off. Okay. Well, actually, no. I'm going to open it. Toads spring out of everywhere. Kind of like, you know, when you open the insect crate and you get all the bugs going everywhere. Yeah, same thing. There's nothing else in there? No. Once the toads clear out, you're like, nope, it was just a place to hold toads. <laughs> so, other than the three uh, um, sort of elixirs, there's not much else to find. They didn't have any of the hag stuff? Surprisingly, no. No? Okay. Just curious. Sorry. So, did you go, did you go floor away, floor? Yes. Okay. Um, I read I read through hags the other day. No, there no, wasn't no. anything. It's just the millstone. The yeah, millstone yeah, dominates yeah, yeah. almost the entire floor plane. Okay. What time? What time of day is it? Um, by this point, you spent your morning buying stuff. You spent a couple hours getting here. I mean, early afternoon. Um, after I've collected the chi- children's bones and have done like my measurements and everything, I want to go out and uh, gather the teeth. I want to. Kind of, I want to bury them, okay, somewhere and put up a little marker. It's gonna take a while, but you can do it. Yeah, because there's a lot of little bones. What are you two doing? Is there a broom? Yeah, this is this is going to take this is going to take him a so a while, um, forty five minutes to an hour measurements, getting the pieces, digging a small hole. I would go out. I'll go out with you, and if the crows are still out there, I can't hear them, but I can tell them that the danger is gone. Okay, whether or not they you can do that. Or, they just kind of call at you. You, you can't yeah, really tell a response. Well, yeah. Like, I understand, like, mannerisms, but that's about it. I mean, they they call at you. They, as best as you can tell, seem appreciative. Right. They were sort of... They didn't really care about it anyway. You get no. the sense that they were more concerned about your well-being going in there. <clears throat> Crows going in there don't have a problem. Ravens going in there don't have a problem. I just like to commune with nature. That's nice. nice. You can commune with nature. Uh, the other two of you, would you like to do anything? Pither, Davin? Are we leaving this thing left standing? I'm setting a fire. Okay. Before we do that, um, are there cages for the chickens? Is there any? Yeah, no, they're in, they're in a coop. They're in, no, are they like they're like carrying cages? Carrying cages. There were children sized crates upstairs. Like, okay, I would like to put all of the chickens in one and take them with us. Yep, you got them. Wait, anything else? I mean, just gonna watch it burn. Are we gonna be able to make it back to Valaki before nightfall? Uh, it only took us two hours to get here for Valaki before a You're also grown adults and adventurers, and you now have two children. So and a box of chickens. And a box of chickens. So you probably can't set the pace that you wanted to. Everybody roll me... His children can ride on his shoulders with ease. Everyone roll me a... Intelligence roll. Intelligence... It's not a saving throw, just... Attitudes. Yeah, roll an edge of intelligence. 21, not 20. 5. 4. Her cart she used to use pastries. You could load all that in there, and you could still move at a medium pace. Oh, yeah, if the children's good. walk on their own, it would be a slow pace. Okay. Good call. Let's do that. So you can take the cart out of the thing, and you fill it full of chickens, and you fill it full of plop both children in there. Are we the taking room. the elixirs with us? Yeah, I mean, I would have grabbed... I don't know who's searching for them, whatever. I would have grabbed them, and okay. I'd probably get handed them to you and ask if you sensed anything. or I can take a look at them. I can detect magic, but I can't identify them. Okay. Okay, so if you want to write that down that you have those elixirs, Troy. Youth, laughter, and mother's milk. That's what they're labeled. They appear to be in more or less identical bottles. Anything else? Or are you just burning the mother down? Burning the mother down. It doesn't take much to stoke it, and it catches a flame. You gents go back. It is now evening in Valaki. So you get there in the evening. What would you like to do? Probably head straight to the Martikovs. You go to the Martikovs. You notice you're getting dirty stairs, but nobody's, like, actually trying to hurt you or anything. I want to take the chickens to the Martikovs for the kitchen. Oh, yeah. No, they don't They don't get so a lot of... As a thank you and to get room and board for the evening. They're very, they're very appreciative of that. They don't have eggs very often, so it's nice to have some chickens. Do but... they have the capacity to care for the chickens? Do they have a coop or something? They... Don't at the moment, There's but they do. They do have the barn, so they could get something figured out. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will stay with them while you guys are doing other things. I mean, uh, I suppose you could leave the tr- crate. Well, actually, I'll try to try to make the crate into a little coopy area. Right. No. Assuming the chickens have quit. Is it nighttime? It's get. It's sun is setting. As much as you can see the sun, it's not full on night yet, but it's getting close. Can we see the fire? Uh oh yeah 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 absolutely. I'm gonna show her one. Huh. I wondered. I wondered where you were. That that was probably not easy. Mm, Only one of us fell. It is hard. It is hard to break a coven. 
Yeah, you fell asleep. Necessary. <laughs> you gentlemen continue to do your best to rid uh, the Valley of Evil. Appreciate it. I don't, I don't know that I necessarily understand the risk of doing so, but I am glad to know that they're gone. Again, I, uh, I do not wish to alarm you, but this is the closest we have been in some time to actually making a difference. I, w- I would hate for any of you to fall on something that is not of a most critical nature. But again, I, I do think you've done the Valley a great service. It's all in good training. You just look at him and go, For the XP! <laughs> and Zachary. If your stony tales were true, Madame Abel would be pleased. Yes, I, I, I believe she will. She and... Uh, I don't think there are many in the Valley who would be upset at, at uh, the destruction of women. A few, perhaps. There will be many... There will be many people attempting to recover over the next few weeks. Would I have time to get to the Vistani cellars and get back before dark? I mean, it's basically getting dark now. That's that's up to you. Well, I mean, it's just outside town. We're going to go that way. Walk. We're going to go that way. In the morning? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Okay, I'll just... I'll just I mean, if we're heading to the swamp slash yeah, the I'll temple... Just, yeah, I can just sell this over. I'll Actually, I'll go ahead and go to the church and see if I can talk to him. Sure. No, he's, he's there. Father Lucian's well, there. Before, yes. ask about the kids. Like, do you, like the mice Markovs, we found these children. Do you think they? Uh, we should take them to the father? Or... Um, they can stay. Um, Donica at this point says they can stay here for now. Um, okay. uh, I would recommend you speak to Father Lucian. Uh, he obviously already has an altar boy. Uh, perhaps we can. They sort of look at him. The boy could perhaps apprentice somewhere. Uh, maybe we could get him started on a trade. He looks to be about the age where we would start training them. So she promises to ask around and see if the butcher or the baker or someone is looking for an apprentice. The candlestick maker. <laughs> he seemed particularly interested in the toy shop. Uh, I don't know that Blinsky would look for an apprentice, but perhaps. Um, the girl is the girl is perhaps too young. Oh, um, actually, no, retcon that. I would not suggest that. Yeah, no, <laughs> he's a bit of a creeper. Yeah, I don't trust that dude. Um, a creeper. I would strongly advise against it, actually. <laughs> perhaps there's a perhaps there is a family who has lost a child. Maybe the in no small part to your actions, the the town is currently in a bit of an I'm, uproar. I was going to ask what, uh, what the temperature of the town has been in the last you know twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. Well, I mean, you guys have only been gone for eight or nine. Yeah. Right? What, yeah. Whatever there is gone. there is some talk of. What to do with you, with you folks? I believe that if you attempt to stay, conflict with the Wachters may be inevitable. Do you find that maybe more people have swayed to their side? It's hard to say. Father Lucian is doing what he can to convince people to follow the church, but the Wachters supposedly have the ear of the castle. Some people would rather fall in line than risk uh, his wrath. Um, so you guys are going to talk to Father Lucian then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, welcome, friends. I I didn't expect to see you so soon. I had heard you had set off this morning. What can I do for you? We will show him the same thing. Same. The fire. Oh. I assume that was your doing <clears throat> then, yes? <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> we were wondering if you would have a some place for a couple of young wards to go. Um, as you sort of talk about it back and forth, I talk to them earlier. The Mardukovs are going to look for an apprentice for the seven-year-old because he's he's old enough to apprentice somewhere. Okay. Um, Father Lucian can provide housing. Food might be a bit of a stretch, but if the Mardukovs help, they you know they can figure it out. Okay. The girl is going to be a lot harder to do, to do because she can't. You know, she's still a little young to be sort of earning her way. But the the father will do what he can to take care of her. Just do me a favor. Keep them away from the doctors. We will do. We will do what we can. Um, the Walker's influence is strong. If you can, keep them away from anybody except for the Markovs. We will do our best to protect the children. As, as I'm sure you understand, the, the structure of Valley Key has changed significantly. Um, we will see what happens next. When you say that, do you feel like there have been a sway towards the Walker side? <sighs> Probably. I would think so, yes. Significant? Uh, well, I heard rumors of of the, the heroes of Valaki invading the Wachter's home and threatening them. 
while I don't necessarily believe those rumors, I do believe that such tales uh, have influenced some of the people of Valaki. In earnest, Father, there's some truth to it. Um, I, I ask no questions. We, we, we had good cause. I believe that you gentlemen are trying to do what's best. Fortunately, sometimes what's best is not always... Sometimes what's best is messy. It's not always... A, the road to salvation is not always easy. It's not always a straight and narrow path. Just do not fall from grace, my friend. This is just a random thought I had. Could you use your telephone man- uh, ability? Um, it's, it's a spell, right? Send it. Send it. Use it to f- people a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes, Can I you could. essentially prank call? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> like, be wary. Like, I don't know. I'm just crazy idea to pop in my head. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I need to read that spell. Because I just had an idea. Um, I will ask him about the pillars. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, they're probably 1,200, 1,400 years old. Um, they are, there are a number of them around. Um, a number of sort of druidic uh, leavings. They have to do with, um, uh, they deal with the, o- the older religions. The Morning Lord and uh, Mother Night. The, uh, and he asks you to describe them, and as you do, I believe the pillars that you're referring to likely point to the four cities. Um, these are the, these are the homes of the gods, Mother Night, uh, the Morning Lord, and other more ancient deities. This is where they would reside. They're Valhalla, if you will. The four cities represent, obviously, the turning of the seasons, and the various gods who are in power at any given time during those seasons, but they also represent their their homes. Are they just guide stones or do you think that there's some sort of, you know... Magical ability? Yeah, some other ability, a portal or, or something of that sort. It is possible. Uh, I, I know of such things. I do not know of any of them here. I mean, uh, probably the largest I, of such things would be Yester Hill. I'm pretty sure that I warned him about a teleportation site in Valaki. You did. Okay. That house burned down. Didn't stop me from getting in. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Um... Have you told anyone else about this? Did you tell them? Yes. What did you tell us? I don't remember any of that. That's how I got out of Castle Ravenloft. I don't what? Know you're us anything. Was it a Drazir type thing? There was a... You told them I don't think they believed you because they were surprised Davin was back. Okay. The... I don't know if you spelled it out though. Like... There was a there was a room with a big brazier in it and an hourglass up above. There were stones around the brazier, each one a different color, and there was a rhyme. or There was text written, and it said, choose this color for this, choose this color for this, and it was all in riddles. I picked the one that said where the coffins hide, threw the stone in the brazier, reached in and touched the flame, and was teleported to the coffin maker's house. Oh. Fell into the wreckage. Violet goes to the mountain spire. Orange goes to the castle's peak. Red goes to where lore goes to lore. I I didn't write down the full descriptions. Green is where the coffins hide. Indigo is the master's the master's bride. That's Valaki. Or not Valaki, uh, the Abbey. He was making the bride for Strahd. Mm-hmm. Blue is ancient magic, and yellow is the master's tomb. Hearing this, Arcana rolls? No religion for you this time, Jeff. Straight man. Nat 20. A natural 20. 14. <coughs> Pickle? Um. Three. I know Okana good. It's fine. For whatever reason, they just look at they look at Pither and Pither goes, duh, magic. <laughs> um You get the sense that uh, you both kind of put your heads together and you realize that it is incredibly unlikely that that had anything to do with the stone circles. Um, okay. The stone circle that you found. Um and you get the sense that a spell how do I put this? A, if you have a tunnel, a tunnel exists on both ends, right? So if you collapse one end of the tunnel, you can't get to that. You know, you can't get there from the other side. 
from what you understand about magic, Matt, this particular kind of magic, it doesn't matter what the other side looks like. The source of the magic is clearly within the castle. Mm -hmm. So even if the landmark on the other side is destroyed, it doesn't matter. You would also assume that this is... It still pinpoints like a geographical spot. Yes. The If anything, the rhyme is to identify it for... The person using it. Yes. In a metagame thing, it's so players can use it. Because why the hell would Strahd label it? That's what right. I would like to know. <laughs> it's literally so the, the players... Use. Like, if I know yellow takes me to my tomb, why would I ever write it down? Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Um, so, the magic is entirely on that side. You would also know, since you got a 20, I'll give you this. This has nothing to do with if Unda, not that he would know... Uh, if the discussion is brought up about the sun, there's no way he was he was a dunce compared to the type of magic this would take. This would take untold amounts of magic. And actually, you might uh, you might even poop yourself a little because you're like, if that's the kind of magic that exists in the castle, that's that's bigly shit. Like, because each time you cast that spell, you're kind of creating that opening. You know what I mean? It's not a tunnel; it's a tear in space and time. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, anything else that you guys want to discuss? Anything else you want to talk to Father Lucian? Maybe. I need to do something first, though. Yeah, what were you going to do that you thought was so clever? I'm going to cast Sending. Okay. You want to write it down and tell me who you're sending to? Okay, so Davin sends to Irina. Where are you? Are you safe? Are you with Sergei or Strahd? How can we find you? I had... If she is... I don't know where the hell she is. If she is on this plane, it goes through. If she's on a different plane, I have a 5% chance of failure. You've used sending before, right? Yes. No, like, like, so you've used it before. You've been in touch. Other people have sent to you before. There's a strong connection. Even when across the plane, there's a strong connection. This sounds bizarre. It sounds as though it's echoing through a tube or something. It's her voice. And that's not how sending has ever been. Are you going to share with the class, Jeff? Davin, I'm somewhere else. Your voice is so dis distant. I don't feel his eyes anymore. Is this happiness? I forgot how that feels. Like I said, it, it, it feels weird. You've even been contacted across the plains before, probably from high-level priests who have gone to, you know commune more closely with uh, um, Celestials. Right. Even then, it was always a clear connection. There's something fuzzy and breaking up about it. Okay. Damn, that's weird. Uh, are you gentlemen doing anything else? <laughs> Last time you sent a double message. So we have another chance to do it. Do you want to try and with her again, or anybody else? Send a message to the walkers. <laughs> Get you strong. No, I don't know if I want to play that card. <laughs> Let's wait till we have the weapon to kill him. Which is where again? I don't know. Which is what again? I don't know. Who do we want to contact? We're going to Perez next. Is that the plan? Yeah, that's the plan. Why don't we holler at uh? Let's see what Corvus at the Crow Man and see if he wants. Corvus to was action. exploring it. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna do ascending to Corvus? Yes. He wants to join up. Wait, first before we do that, can we just go ask if he's one of the birds in the rafters? Like, you know, they have that big group of birds up in the attic. Can we just go make sure? I doubt he would just be hanging out there. I don't know, man. He did it before. I, do I need to include anything else? I I will consult everybody before I send. We are heading for Berez. What did you find there? Join us? That's what you're sending? Yeah. Uh, I think you'll get my point with this. <laughs> Does that make sense to you, Jeff? That stops. Yeah. Right where I stopped. Sorry. Literally and picks up. Literally cut off mid sentence. Um Corvus's reply is Well, I sent to Corvus. We're heading for Berez. What did you find there? Join us. Tell us where to meet you. And the response was pain. It hurts. She won't kill me. I cannot. And then in a different script below that, I got, hello again, dwarf. 
still playing about in my hands. Play your part. Be the hero. But know this. The game only ends when I say so. And you will suffer for taking her from me. Our title track, Nocturne, provided by Sleep for the Weary off their new album, Nocturnes. To find out more about Sleep for the Weary, check them out on iTunes, SoundCloud, Facebook, and at sleepfortheweary.com. Join in the brothel conversation on Facebook. Questions, comments, and suggestions can be sent to between two crits at gmail.com. Like what you heard? Subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. Yeah.